Paul Murphy. Ireland's childcare barometer shows that 65% of the Irish public uh, agree that childcare, like primary education, should be free. People before profit uh, agrees. If we want happy, healthy and developmentally successful children, we need proper state investment in early childhood education and childcare. The Minister spoke earlier about all the supports given during COVID, etc. But do you accept that going back to normal Going back to the previous model, the previous model had absolutely failed. It was a disaster for children, it was a disaster for workers, and a disaster for um, families. Uh, well, uh, as I said in, in my discussion with, with Deputy Function beforehand, the issue of affordability of early learning and childcare for parents is an absolute key priority for me. We need to achieve this alongside our continuing work to improve quality, sustainability, and accessibility. Um, this year, my department is investing already £638 million, uh, into the sector, and affordability for parents is a key policy objective in terms of that, uh, that, that investment. And obviously, that's separate to the COVID supports I've spoken about earlier on. Obviously, there are two major schemes we use in terms of, of, of the direction of that money, the Early Childhood uh, uh, Care and Education Scheme, ECHE, and the NCS, the National Child Care Scheme. And together, these two schemes provide for two years of free preschool education with more than 100,000 children benefit, benefiting from ECHE each year. Universal NCS subsidies of up to €1,170 per year for up to 16,000 children who are under three years. And then the income assessed NCS subsidies, which can be up to €11,934 per year for up to 64,000 children up to the age of 15. So this combined approach to funding seeks to provide support for all children and families while offering progressively greater supports to those who have the greatest need. And I'm proud that this government is committed to that increase of getting us up to €1 billion Euro per annum investment by 2028, and I'm de determined to play my part in terms of achieving that. And the new funding model, which I discussed earlier on, will be a key vehicle to ensure this. Um, and I've referred in the earlier answer to the expert group that was established in September 2019, and which has been working on this new funding model based on the idea of progressive universalism uh, um, that, 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 and that's what they're seeking to, to achieve and deliver in terms of the, 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 that report. Very extensive research has been commissioned by the expert group. All of that research is, is available on the First Five uh, website, and it looks at various things, a DASH model, control of parental fees, etc. So as I say, the expert group will be sending its report to me in November of this year, and I'll pub publish it subsequently, but I'm using its influence uh, in terms of my budget bid this year. This is just inadequate amounts of, of money. We have a situation whereby families are spending 34% of household income on childcare, compared to 3% in Austria, 6% in Sweden, where childcare workers are, uh, in many cases, on minimum uh, wage. We have a crisis situation, and the government proposes basically to go back to normal. UNICEF recommend that spending on childcare and early childhood education should be equivalent to 1% of GDP. Because of our inflated GDP, let's say, use GNI. But 638 million is one third of 1% of GNI. Even a billion by 2028, and who knows whether we'll ever uh, get there, is, is still substantially short. You need 1.8 billion to reach 1% of GNI. The government is failing the country's children, something that will leave them disadvantaged for life. At the very least, we should have a commitment to a national childcare service and a commitment to increasing funding to 1% of GNI star. Disagrees with your argument, Deputy, that we're not putting enough money into childcare. And we've only been putting money into childcare for the last 10 years. Um, so we were coming from literally zero investment 10 years ago to this figure now. And we have to continue to increase that, 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 that figure. Um, but I don't agree with what you're saying, that we're going back to, to normal. We're introducing the JLC to provide for a pay structure for these incredibly low-paid uh, workers, incredibly low-paid women. Uh, and we understand that that has to be supported by government, and government will take action to ensure that we do support that. We're creating a workforce development plan, because one of the issues when I speak to, to, to young women who have just completed their degrees is that they don't actually see a future for themselves 
working as childcare professionals, even though they've just spent three or four years getting their level seven or, or, or level eight program. So creating a clear career pathway is another essential element to retaining staff within this sector. This is not a time for half measures. It's a time to restructure our entire way that childcare operates, to recognise the failure of the current model and to set ourselves on a short, direct, rapid path to a national childcare service, publicly provided free at the point of use. The Minister says nobody disagrees that we're underfunding childcare, but Minister, with all due respect, you're the Minister. So, you know, you can go outside maybe and join a protest against your own government, the government TDs like to do that, but you are part of the government, you make these uh, decisions. If, if you increase the level of funding on childcare and early childhood education to 1% of GNI star, what would that mean for people? I mean, the extension of the early childhood scheme from 15 uh, hours, 38 weeks a year to 30 hours, 48 weeks a year, would mean increased funding for the national childcare scheme to subsidise costs for all parents. It would reverse cuts to after-school services in disadvantaged areas, and it could mean higher wages for childcare workers m moving to a minimum wage of 15 euro an hour. The government could make the decision to do that. You know, you're right, I am the Minister and I think it's important as Minister that I listen and that's why I went out to the protest uh, earlier this week to hear from uh, childcare professionals, to hear from people on, uh, who, who, are, who are working in, in services on, on, a, on a daily basis, to hear from managers of these services. And it's not the first time I've met many of them, I've met many of them online over the last year because I do listen uh, and, you know, changes will be made on foot of, of, of the information that, 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 that we get back. But in terms of the, 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 the longer term uh, vision for childcare in this country, we have a very substantial piece of work coming to us that is mapping out how we increase public investment, but also increase public management of the system. And that's absolutely essential because it's not enough just to throw money at the system. We have to have increased public management. Uh, that's the, the JLC is part of that process, but there will be other elements in, in, in terms of in, ensuring that the extra money we get in delivers affordability, uh -huh. delivers quality and sustainability.